In the last video, we learned our last differentiation technique, which was the chain rule. And we can do that when we have an inside and an outside function. And so let's go ahead and use that in a couple more examples. My next example is y equals the square root of t squared plus 3t plus 2. And hopefully you can clearly identify your inside and your outside function. I always like to pick the inside one first. It's usually the easier to see. That is t squared plus 3t plus 2. So that's my inside function. That's what I'm going to identify with this g in my rule. And then whatever is left over is going to be my outside function. So in this case, my left over is going to be the square root of x. And that's what we're going to identify as my f in my chain rule. Now, when we try and take the derivative of this, we still don't know how to take the derivative of the square root other than to convert it into a power. So we must do that before I actually take the derivative. So I'm just manipulating my original function so my notation still stays y. I must keep my inside piece as is. And then I know that I can rewrite the square root as a 1 half power. So again, my inside function identifies as this here. And then my outside function identifies as something to the 1 half power. So when you go to take the derivative of this, the very first thing you do is take the derivative of something to the 1 half power using the power rule, keep the inside function the same, and then you're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So this would be the perfect time to pause the video and take the derivative of this on your own. Okay. First things first, my notation. Typically when we use y, the derivative notation is dy dx. But my variable here is not x, it's t. So this notation is dy dt. So the derivative of my outside, the derivative of something to the 1 half power. I pull my power down in front, and I subtract 1 from my original power. So my 1 half comes down in front. And then I take 1 half minus 1 to give me negative 1 half is my original power. That's what's going to still stay my outside function. That's what's going to identify as this f prime of x. But my g prime of x stays the same. So I must keep this here, the inside piece of this, the same. t squared plus 3t plus 2. And then times. Now I need to take the derivative of my inside function. So now I need to take the derivative of this piece here. The derivative of t squared gives me 2t. The derivative of 3t gives me 3. And the derivative of 2 is a constant that just disappears. So I have the derivative of my outside, keeping the original of the inside, times the derivative of the inside. And so now this matches with my chain rule that I have listed over here. To simplify it, sometimes you can simplify these a whole lot, and sometimes you can only simplify them a little bit. But let me tell you what you cannot do to simplify, because this is a mistake that I see students do quite often. I see a lot of students try and distribute things through this set of parentheses here, such as this 1 half, or maybe you even choose to multiply this. But you absolutely cannot do that because this here has this exponent on the outside. So if you follow your PEMDAS rules, your parentheses and your exponents stay first before you can multiply anything through. So I cannot ever multiply anything through this here when it has an exponent on the outside. So what can we do to simplify? You might choose to distribute this 1 half through this set of parentheses, and that's OK because I don't have any exponents here. But in this example, I don't know that that's going to do us much good either. If everything in this green section here was an even, and if I were to distribute my 1 half through, it would make my coefficient smaller, then I would recommend doing so. But in this problem, it would actually give me a fraction on the inside. So I don't know that that gains us any ground. 
So really the only thing that I would do to simplify this is just to rewrite it. And I actually don't think that actually simplifies it any. So I would just put it in this order here. And again, if you skipped that step, that's fine because we didn't really do any work. So if you choose to hand this in here, that is a perfectly acceptable final answer. But we know I encourage you to rewrite it without negatives and without fractions in our exponents. So to get in practice of that, let's go ahead and see how that looks. I know I'm going to have a fraction because I have a fraction here and I have a negative exponent there. My 2t plus 3, that has a positive exponent, so that stays up top. My 1 half moves my 2 to the bottom. We said this one's going to go to the denominator because it's negative. We know we can rewrite the 1 half power as a square root, and then my square root is of my inside function here. So if we choose to rewrite this, we would have 2t plus 3, and I don't need those parentheses, over 2 times my square root of t squared plus 3t plus 2. So this is what it would look like if you chose to rewrite it without the negatives and without the fractions in our exponents. So now you've seen another example of doing the chain rule. Let's go ahead and do another example. In this example, we want to take the derivative of it, but we actually want to apply it in this technique that we used quite often before. We want to figure out what the equation of the tangent line is. So we can either use our y equals mx plus b formula, or I prefer the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we know to use either one of these equations, we're going to have to come up with our x value. And that's usually the easy one, because that's given to us. But we also have to come up with our y value. And we do that by substituting our x value into the original equation. So let's do that here. So I need to do f of 0 to give me my y value. So that's 7 over 2 times 0 plus 3 to the fifth or 7 over 3 to the fifth, or 7 over 243. So that's what's going to go ahead and substitute in for my y value. OK, now to figure out what's going to go in for my m value. We know m stands for slope, and we know that we find the slope by taking the derivative of our function. So we have to take the derivative of this function here. OK. We can do it a couple of different ways. And this is the time to remind you that this chapter not only tests to see if you can memorize and utilize the derivative rules, but it's also to see can you manipulate it to take the derivative of it the easiest way. I can take the derivative of it like this. And if I do that, since I have a fraction here, I would have to use a quotient rule. But I would also have to use a chain rule, because in the denominator, I have an inside piece and I have an outside piece. So I can take the derivative of it using that way. Or let me see if I can manipulate this to get rid of at least one of those larger rules. So what I can do, since I have a constant in my numerator, let me manipulate this denominator and let me move it up to the numerator so I can eliminate my fraction or my quotient rule. I can rewrite this as 7 times 2x plus 3 to the negative fifth power. We know that we can move things from the denominator to the numerator by just negating my exponent. And now I can take the derivative of this. And if I did that, I wouldn't need the quotient rule anymore. You might think that, well, I do have a multiplication, so I'd have to do a product rule, so what's the big difference? Well, there is a big difference because my product here is just by a constant. So I get to use my constant multiple rule where it says I don't have to take the derivative by using the product rule. I can just pull my constant out to the side. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of it in this format. So my f prime of x is my constant times now I need to take the derivative of this here. This is my chain rule. 
where my inside piece is this 2x plus 3, and my outside piece is something to the negative fifth power. So the derivative of something to the negative fifth power is negative 5, and then my something, and I subtract a power to the negative 6. Well, my something stays the same as this 2x plus 3 here. So that's the derivative of my first half of my chain rule. And then I need to multiply it by the second half, the derivative of my inside piece. So I need to take the derivative of, of this piece here. And the derivative of 2x plus 3 is just the constant of 2. Now, to simplify this, I can multiply all of these constants out here. I have 7 times negative 5 times 2. So that gives me negative 70, and then copying this down, 2x plus 3 to the negative 6. Now, since I know I'm going to have to substitute a value in for here to give me my slope, this is definitely where I encourage you to rewrite it so when you simplify it, it makes a little bit more sense. So my f prime of x is equal to negative 70 over 2x plus 3 to the positive 6 power. Positive because I moved that piece back down to the denominator. Remember, I cannot distribute my negative 70 through this here because I have my exponent. And I must do parentheses and exponents before I do multiplication. So here's my derivative. Okay, now I'm going to use my derivative to figure out my slope value. So my slope is equal to f prime of 0. So that gives me negative 70 over 2 times 0 plus 3 to the 6 power which gives me negative 70 over 3 to the 6, or negative 70 over 729. That does not simplify, so that's what I'm going to substitute in for my slope value. Okay, now I can come up with the equation of this tangent line. So I have y minus my y value, 7 over 243, equals my slope of negative 70 over 729, times x minus my x value of 0. So when I distribute this negative 70 through, that just gives me negative 70 over 729x on the right. And then if I move this over to my right-hand side, that gives me y equals that plus 7 over 243. So here is my final equation of this tangent line. Now, you know that I always suggest to double check this, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to pull my calculator up, and we're going to double check this here. But I just want to warn you, since I have something over to the fifth power, and my result of my fractions were unusual or smaller type of fractions, that this might not be able to visualize as easy as we would like it to be. I'm going to go ahead and type in my original equation. 7 divided by 2x plus 3 to the fifth power. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my derivative, which is negative 70 over 729 times x plus 7 over 243. I'm going to start this out on my standard window, but we're most likely going to have to adjust it to see what we want to see. The blue here is my original equation, and the green is my tangent line. That's actually not a bad image because we see this in colors here on my calculator. If you tried to do this on your calculator when you didn't see the colors, it might be a little bit more difficult to see. We want to confirm that the green is the tangent line to my blue graph at the place in question, which in this problem was x equals 0. So we need to make sure that these two graphs intersect at x equals 0 and y equals 0, and we need to make sure that these two graphs at x equals 0. It looks like they have it here, but we can always zoom in to confirm or get a better visual of what we're looking at. 
So I can zoom in by using my zoom in feature or my zoom box feature, whichever you prefer. Let's go ahead and try and use my zoom in feature. I need to tell the calculator where to zoom in at. Well, since I'm looking close to the origin here, I don't need to move my cursor any. I can just hit enter and it's going to zoom in around my origin. And again, it looks like my green graph is the tangent line to my blue graph. It looks like it intersects and it looks like it has the same slope at this point here, y equals zero. If you want, you can always zoom in a little bit, or maybe even manually adjust it where we can zoom in around the y values but keep the x values the same. Or if you're happy with this, then that's perfectly fine too. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my Y values just to get a little bit more clear picture here. Um, let me go to about negative one half to positive one half. And so my scale I'll do by point one or one tenth of a unit. And now we can see that that blue graph doesn't actually intercept the origin. We can see that it intercepts it a little bit farther. And we can see that the green graph does the exact same thing. So this is the point where I'm fully convinced that we have the right graph here. So I've done a couple of examples of using the chain rule. And in this one, I actually even applied it into a process that we've done quite a few times before. In the next video, in the next video, I'm going to move on to using the chain rule again, but now I'm going to combine it with some of the larger rules, so such as the product rule and the quotient rule, which we were so easily able to avoid in this problem, but in not all other examples, we will be able to do that such a thing.